Hi there, Matt Wade here, and today I wanted to take a bit of a big picture view and provide an everyday intro on how to use Microsoft Teams in a short, digestible video that gives you everything you need to kill it in Teams without having to spend a ton of time learning. So let's dive right in. Teams basically combines a bunch of apps or services you've been using for years. Chat and meetings replace Skype for business. Teams and channels are replacements for email threads. Files replaces network shares and email attachments. And you're able to edit those files right in Teams. To start out, let's talk about chat. Chat is a space for having ad hoc conversation, usually high priority, kind of like text messaging. It's not generally a place for getting work done since going through chat history isn't easy. A team is much better for getting work done and managing decision making and collaboration. But chat is perfect for checking in with colleagues, sending in your lunch order and giving your boss the update that they were asking for. Open chat from the team's app bar and from here you can see your ongoing private chats and start new ones. Let's create a new chat with someone by clicking the new chat button to the top right of the chat listing. Start typing the name of the person and select them. Actually, let's add a few names. To keep things organized, let's rename this chat so I can find it later. Now let's draft our message. When you're writing messages in chats or in channels, always enable the formatting button. I wish it was enabled by default, but it's not. In here, you'll find all the standard formatting tools, but you can also set a message as important, insert tables, add quotes, add hyperlinks, and use bulleted and numbered lists. If you want a recipient to get a specific notification, at mention them by using the at symbol and type their name. They'll see a little icon that shows there's something they need to read. Fun fact, as you're typing out that at mention, you can press backspace to remove part of the name to be more informal or to shorten names that have lots of information like department or office location. Press the paper airplane to send your message. Quick tip, press the up arrow button immediately after if you want to edit the message. And to enable read receipts, see the link in the video description. You can like and react to messages, edit your message, save important messages, and more. Incidentally, your saved messages end up under your main menu. Just click your face. Anyway, the ellipsis button is really useful. You should always keep it in the front of your mind. Chat also lets you share emoticons, memes, GIFs, and custom stickers to keep things fun. Note that you can also use emoji. Just press Windows period on Windows or Control Command Space on Mac OS to pull up your emoji library. On mobile, you can also swipe right on a message to reply to it. You can't do this on desktop, but you can copy, paste, and format it as a quote. Big picture wise, you can pin chats, mute them as so you don't get notifications. This is helpful during meetings. Hide them and more. Click the ellipsis on a chat to see all of your options. You can't delete a chat, so if you wanna get rid of it, just hide it. Now let's jump into your teams. Create teams for organizational units, classrooms, projects, affinity groups, and more. Each team has its own permissions and everyone in the team has access to all the channels and files in that team. When people join, they get access. When they leave, they lose access. Each team is split into channels. Channels are kind of like folders in a shared drive. It's an arbitrary but useful way to split up discussion and team files by topic. This is a really useful way to manage what's important to you. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're a marketing professional on a product development team. You likely don't care about the engineering channel, so you can hide it and stop following it. You'll be notified if someone at mentions you and you're free to peruse it yourself, but it won't intrude into your workday uninvited. On the other hand, if you were still working in email, you'd be CC'd on all of those emails regardless, wasting your time and causing you a lot of strife. Major, major win moving from email to Teams. Channels are a good place for getting work done. Everyone who has access can see everything that's happened in the team, so they have context and a running history, which makes a team a way better place to get work done than a private chat. Jumping into a channel, you can start a conversation thread by clicking New Conversation. There are different types of conversations, a standard one or an announcement. Announcements have bigger text and a graphic at the top. You can also post to multiple channels to save you some time, but a standard conversation is the most common. Like with chat, always click the formatting button to bring up your options. If you're starting a channel conversation, always, always, always use the subject line. You'd never send an email without a subject, right? Same in Teams. It keeps things on topic, orderly, 
And frankly, when you're looking for something, scrolling through endless conversations that have no subjects is a nightmare. A little time investment at the beginning saves people a lot of time later on. When you write a message in a channel, always use at mentions so everyone in the team knows who the message is meant for. This is like using the to field in an email. Without it, it's like being at an emergency and asking someone to dial 911 or the emergency number. Everyone just looks around and nobody does anything, right? So make sure to at mention regularly. That said, don't at mention the channel or the team unless necessary. Doing that is similar to replying all in email or sending spam. Convince yourself the channel or team needs to be notified before doing it. Incidentally, at mentioning the channel isn't the same as at mentioning the team. People can mute the channel mentions, but they can't mute the team mentions. Your messages in a channel thread will have a red line on the left for easy identification. Any messages where you've been mentioned will have a red at symbol on the right, and messages where channel or teams have been uh, mentioned have their own red icons on the right to stand out. Messages and channels are similar to those in chat, but try not to use memes, GIFs, and stickers since they take up so much space in an area where work is meant to get done. It's easy to get into GIF wars, and one line of useful information gets effectively swallowed by a bunch of GIFs going back and forth. Keep a channel reserved for fun stuff where memes and GIFs are fair game and tell everyone to avoid them elsewhere. I usually call this the water cooler channel. Reply to a conversation with the reply button. Like chat, you can react to messages. I suggest reserving the thumbs up as an acknowledgement tool to replace the unnecessary thanks, got it, okay messages, uh, which really aren't necessary with that reaction existing. Think about how many emails you've received in your life that were literally just those kinds of messages, usually not that valuable, taking up your time, being annoying. But no more with Teams. Oh, and as with chat, the message ellipsis menu is really useful. Sharing and collaborating on files is a major aspect of Teams too. You can share files in both channels and private chat, but they work notably differently. First, let's open the Files app in the Teams app bar. This app shows all the recent files you've opened in any Teams. You also have direct access to your OneDrive account, which is super handy. You can add other file tools like Google Drive and Dropbox if you'd like. I don't find that useful though because you have to download the files to use them. Files in a team are stored channel by channel. Each channel has a tab at the top called Files, and your files are organized by folders. Try to keep your folder structure no more than three levels deep. For one, folder structures are a nightmare to learn anyway, so do your colleagues a favor. But there's also a character limit to the web address of a file, so more folders means a longer web address, which could cause the file to break. You can create and edit Office files right in Teams, though you can also open them in the desktop app if you need. Feel free to drag and drop almost any file type to upload them into Teams as well. You can even upload folders, but there's a limit to the number of files and folders you can upload at once. You've got a bunch of other features available, like being able to move files between Teams and OneDrive, copying files, deleting them, renaming them, syncing, and more. If you have any experience with SharePoint, the files are actually stored in a SharePoint site that comes with your team, and they're stored in the default document library. Because SharePoint is behind the scenes, you have a ton of advanced features if you want them, but that's a video for a different day. Sharing files is the important part. You can reference a file or multiple files in a channel message, and you should. Basically, if you ever reference a file in your conversation, you should always link to it so readers don't have to go looking for the file and so they don't mistakenly look to the wrong one. To share a file in a conversation, click the paperclip below the message. If the file doesn't exist, you can upload it, though if you do, it gets dropped in the Files tab and it isn't organized in a folder, so keep that in mind or select it from the team. I suggest the latter. This is equivalent to attaching or linking a file in an email. One single source of truth on a file, everyone clicks and opens the same file, it's glorious. Now if you're in private chat, you can send files there too. Click the paperclip to share an existing file in your OneDrive or to upload from your computer. Just note that when you send a file in a chat, the file automatically gets uploaded to the sender's OneDrive in a folder called Microsoft Teams Chat Files. In case you didn't know, when someone leaves the organization, their OneDrive automatically gets deleted. Because of this, don't collaborate on files in chat, or at least keep it to a minimum. Always collaborate on files in a team because eventually your chat files could disappear and you don't want that. One last thing, make use of OneDrive Sync Tool. 
You can sync your team's files directly to your computer, tablet, or phone for offline use, which is super useful. You can sync channel by channel or team by team, but definitely make use of that. One of the biggest and most complex parts of Teams is the online meetings aspect. I think it's safe to say most of us are all too familiar with online meetings nowadays, so let's try to take what we know and build on that. First, scheduling a meeting is simple. Click the calendar icon in the app bar and click new meeting. Just like in any other calendaring app, give your event a name, invite people, give the meeting a description and send it out. You can invite people by name if they're internal or you can add an email address if they're external. You can also schedule meetings through Outlook and the Teams and Outlook mobile apps. One tip is to set your default meeting time lengths to 25 and 50 minutes to keep meetings a bit shorter and give people a bit of a reprieve now that we're all stuck in front of a screen all the time. You can manage this in Outlook, link in video description. Another tip is to add the Find Time plugin to Outlook for sending polls out to invitees when you don't have access to their calendar. It's a Microsoft product, it's free, and it works amazingly well. Link in description. But that's not all. Once the meeting is scheduled, you have a lot of options available to you to customize your meeting. Open the calendar item and click Meeting Options. From here, you can control who has to wait in the lobby when the meeting starts, who has the ability to present during the meeting, and more. Meeting roles are an important thing to be knowledgeable on, so I'll leave a link to an overview on that in the description. A few minutes before the meeting or when someone joins it, you'll get a reminder to join the meeting in Teams. Join through the notification or open the calendar event and click Join. From there, you can select video and audio sources, add a room, change your background, and more. For external invitees, the invitation email has a Join Microsoft Teams meeting link at the bottom, as well as a dial-in number in case you have that feature. The new meeting experience is out and it should open the meeting in a new window. If you don't have it, see this video on how to enable it. Keep the top toolbar in mind because it gives you all of your tools. First, use video. In a remote world, you need to see people. Video off should only be if the meeting is a presentation from one to many or your internet bandwidth just can't handle it. That's just me though. Then there's sound. You can't hear all the background noise coming from your microphone. Because of that, you should stay on mute unless you're talking. I also recommend using the hand raise rule. Click the hand raise button in the toolbar to indicate you want to talk, and the meeting facilitator should track that and call on people. The next most important tool is the chat. Click the chat icon to type back and forth with attendees, which is a great way to share information, links, and more without bothering the presenter or speakers. This chat ends up in your private chat list and it can be a great way to keep in contact with the attendees after the meeting is over, especially if some participants were given follow-up tasks. Track who's in the meeting with the participant pane. From here you can see whose hands are up, put their hands down, mute them if they're unmuted and making noise, change their meeting role on the fly, and even boot them from the meeting. You can also invite people in your organization on the fly or share a link to external people. Share your screen if you're discussing a file, slides, or web page, and always zoom in. You can also share a whiteboard. I have a number of posts how you can share your video and content concurrently as well, uh, as well as guidance on how to make the most of PowerPoint during a Teams meeting. Hint, I never use the built-in PowerPoint sharing tool. Links in the description. As with other aspects in Teams, look at the ellipsis menu. You have a ton of features available there. The biggest ones are the views. You can get large gallery view to show up to 49 people at once. You need to have at least 11 people, including you, with their cameras on to use this. Then there's together mode, uh, which places cutouts of the participants in a virtual space, like a conference room or lecture hall. You need five people, including you, with their cameras on to use it. Uh, both large gallery view and together mode do not affect how other people see the meeting. Views are personal to each attendee. Uh, for a deep dive in using those, click the card to watch that video. The ellipsis menu also gives you options to record your meeting, enable automatic uh, closed captioning, change your camera and microphone, update your background, and more. Before you finish, you can download a copy of the attendance report. When you're done, you can leave or end the meeting. Ending the meeting ends it for everyone, where leaving it means it can still keep going if others remain in the meeting. If you recorded the meeting, the recording will be available in the meeting chat. If you included external people, you'll have to download the video recording and upload it to OneDrive to share a link with them. There's a lot more to meetings, including live events, channel meetings, meet now meetings, and more. 
But that's a pretty good crash course on the basic online meeting. You get the best experience in the desktop app, but the mobile app is pretty good too. You can even transfer with a tap from desktop to mobile if you need to take the meeting on the go. Just join the call on your phone after you've joined on desktop and the app runs you through it. You can invite anyone with an email address to a Teams meeting. They can join with Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome, and they don't even need to download a plugin or app. It's so much better than Zoom and WebEx in this respect. And lastly, make sure to check out my guide to Rockstar Meetings in Microsoft Teams. It's a helpful free ebook that you can add to any channel as a website tab to help your colleagues make the most of their meetings. Link in description. To close out, there are a few more things you wanna take advantage of when you use Teams. For one, download the app. I know I just said that, but I'm gonna repeat it. The desktop app gives you a lot more features than the web version, especially in meetings. Customize your notifications. If you're overwhelmed by notifications, it's kind of your fault, sorry to say. You can open up settings, notifications, and modify which notifications you get. You can also mute channels, mute specific conversations, and mute chats so you can minimize unnecessary pings. On top of that, you can even enable quiet hours on mobile to set a hard work-life balance timeline. I strongly suggest quiet hours. Use the back button. The desktop app has a back button and it's really useful. I forget about it way too often, especially when I open files and then feel the need to click the Teams button to get back to the channel I wanted to be in. Waiting for that loading time is annoying, but the back button avoids all that. It's just like using a back button in a browser. Now search isn't amazing, but it definitely works. Use the search bar at the top center to search conversations, chats, files, including full text in the files, and people. It's also a great place to start a call or chat with someone using what's called a slash command. Try typing slash call in a person's name. It'll start a call with that person. Another useful slash command is slash test call. Try it, I swear it's not a bad thing. The last good command is getting a list of keyboard shortcuts. Just type slash keys. Use good etiquette. I've spent a lot of time documenting how organizations agree on and follow good behavior rules. Make sure to check out my everyday guide to etiquette in Microsoft Teams for that. Add it as a website tab to any channel as a compact and agreement on how people should act. There's also a PDF you can download if you need it to be a little bit more easily shareable. Link in description. All right, well I know that's a lot, but so is Teams. Now I've been using Teams since 2017 and I've never looked back. It almost physically hurts me to open up email these days because Teams is just such a better experience. Easier to converse, way better threading, great file sharing and editing, and available pretty much on every platform thanks to many apps and the web version. So that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you found this helpful. If you did, I'm actually available for remote instructor-led Teams training if you need it, link in description. And I'm super curious to hear what your Teams tips and experiences have been. So please drop your thoughts and experiences and insights into the comments so everyone else can learn from what your team does. And as always, a like and subscribe is much appreciated. Happy chatting, meeting, and collaborating in Microsoft Teams.